CDL Manual Section 1 Introduction A commercial motor vehicle, CMV, is defined as A. A vehicle with a gross weight over 26,001 pounds. B. A vehicle transporting hazardous materials. C. A vehicle transporting 16 or more passengers. D. All of the above. CDL Manual Section 1.1.1 Knowledge Tests All drivers who need a CDL must take the A. Air Brakes Test B. Combination Vehicles Test C. Chauffeur's License Test D. General Knowledge Test CDL Manual Section 1.2.2 CDL Disqualifications Alcohol You're pulled over for weaving all over the lanes. If you refuse to take an alcohol sobriety test, you may be disqualified just as if you were driving under the influence, DUI. This is because A. Higher standard of care law B. Reasonable cause law C. Implied consent law D. None of the above CDL Manual Section 1.2.2 Alcohol If you are stopped at a rest area and found to have a BAC, blood alcohol concentration, of 0.02, you will A. Be in trouble with the dispatcher. B. Be placed out of service for 24 hours. C. Be placed out of service for 48 hours. D. Be placed out of service for 72 hours. CDL Manual Section 1.3 Other CDL Rules Upon conviction of a traffic violation, you should notify your employer within 30 days if A. The violation occurred in your personal vehicle B. The violation occurred in a commercial vehicle C. The violation was for parking in a restricted area. D. Both A and B. CDL Manual Section 1.3 Other CDL Rules If you are convicted of a traffic violation in a state other than the one you were issued your CDL, A. You must notify your home state of the conviction. B. That state will notify your home state. C. It's nobody's business but your own. D. It doesn't go on your record. CDL Manual Section 1.3 Other CDL Rules When should you wear seatbelts? A. Only in states where it is required by law. B. Any time you are in a moving vehicle. C. Only when engaged in interstate commerce. D. Only when traveling on a highway. CDL Manual Section 2.1.1. Why inspect? If your vehicle doesn't pass a roadside inspection, A. It can be declared out of service. B. You cannot drive the vehicle, even to a repair station. C. You may repair it on the spot, then resume your trip. D. All of the above. CDL Manual Section 
2.1.3 Driving Safely, What to Look For Suspension Systems A. Keep the load secure B. Keep the axles in place C. Keep the brake drum from failing D. Keep the steering wheel tight CDL Manual Section 2.1.3 What to Look For Tires should be replaced A. When the tread separates B. When there are broken valve stems C. If the tread depth on your front tires is less than 4 30 seconds deep D. All of the above. CDL Manual Section 2.1.3 What to Look For Which of these pieces of emergency equipment should be carried at all times in your vehicle? A. Fire extinguishers B. Warning devices for parked vehicles C. Spare electrical fuses if the vehicle uses them. D. All of the above. CDL Manual Section 2.1.3 What to Look For The key principle in balancing cargo weight is to keep the load A. On the side away from most traffic B. Balanced in the cargo area C. To the front. D. To the rear. CDL Manual Section 2.1.3 Vehicle Inspection What to Look For What is the reason the exhaust system should be checked? A. A leaking exhaust system can allow poisonous fumes into the cab. B. A leaking exhaust system can promote poor fuel mileage. C. A leaking exhaust system can be caused by snow and rain. D. A leaking exhaust system can hamper your visibility. CDL Manual Section 2.1.3 What to Look For Rust around wheel nuts often means that A. The nuts are loose. B. The nuts are broken. C. It's been raining a lot lately. D. It's nothing to worry about. CDL Manual Section 2.1.3 What to Look For Suspension System Defects Is it legal to drive with one-fourth of a vehicle's leaf springs broken or missing? A. It doesn't make any difference as long as you drive slow. B. Yes. C. No. D. None of the above. CDL Manual Section 2.1.3 What to look for. You are checking your tires for a pre-trip inspection. Which of these statements is true? A. Tires of mismatched sizes should not be used on the same vehicle. B. Radial and bias ply tires can be used together on the same vehicle. C. Dual tires should be touching each other. D. Two thirty seconds inch tread depth is safe for the front tires. CDL Manual Section 2.1.5 Seven Step Inspection Method The parking brake should be tested while the vehicle is A. Moving slowly B. 
moving at highway speed. C. Going downhill. D. Parked. CDL Manual Section 2.1.5 Seven Step Inspection Method Normal clutch travel is A. Less than one inch B. About one or two inches C. More than two inches D. It changes and can't be measured CDL Manual Section 2.1.5 Seven Step Inspection Method Normal oil pressure while idling is A. 165 to 185 degrees Fahrenheit B. 30 to 75 PSI C. 30 to 35 PSI D. 5 to 15 PSI. CDL Manual Section 2.1.5 Seven Step Inspection Method. How do you test hydraulic brakes for leaks? A. Measure the free play in the pedal with a ruler. B. With the vehicle stopped, pump the pedal three times. Apply firm pressure for 5 seconds, then hold and see if the pedal moves. C. Step on the brake pedal and the accelerator at the same time and see if the vehicle moves. D. Move the vehicle slowly and see if it stops when the brake is applied. CDL Manual Section 2.1.5 Seven Step Inspection Method which one of these is not part of the check of the engine compartment done for a pre-trip inspection? A. Worn wiring insulation. B. Engine oil level. C. Condition of belts and hoses. D. Valve clearance. CDL Manual Section 2.1.5 Seven Step Inspection Method Your vehicle battery box must have A. At least two batteries B. Enough fluid to work properly C. At least one loose wire for grounding D. A secure cover CDL Manual Section 2.1.6 Inspection During a Trip An on-route inspection should include checking A. Cargo doors and or cargo securement B. Tire temperature C. Brake temperature D. All of the above CDL Manual Section 2.2 Basic Control of Your Vehicle Every time you park your vehicle and shut the engine off, you should A. Leave it in gear if it has a manual transmission B. Apply the parking brake C. Turn the steering wheel as far to the left as you can D. Do all the above. CDL Manual Section 2.2 Basic Control of Your Vehicle You are starting your vehicle in motion from a stop. As you apply power to the drive wheels, they start to spin. You should A. Take your foot off the accelerator and apply the brakes. B. Press harder on the accelerator. C. Take your foot off the accelerator. D. Try a lower gear. CDL Manual Section 
accelerating. When accelerating, A. Always use the parking brake to slow down. B. Do not engage the clutch before you take your foot off the brake. C. Speed up smoothly and gradually and avoid jerking. D. Hammer down when your wheels start to spin. CDL Manual Section 2.2.2 .2 Steering How should you hold your hands on the steering wheel? A. Near the bottom of the wheel. B. Opposite sides of the wheel. C. Near the top of the wheel. D. One hand on the steering wheel and one on the shifter. CDL Manual Section 2.2.2 .2 Steering Mentions Opposite Side of the Wheel The proper way to hold the steering wheel is at clock positions blank and blank. A. 6 and 12 B. 3 and 9 C. 4.30 and 7.30 D, 1.30 and 10.30. CDL Manual Section 2.2.4 Backing Safely Which of these statements about backing a heavy vehicle is true? A. Backing is always dangerous. B. You should back and turn toward the driver's side whenever possible. C. You should use a helper and communicate with hand signals whenever possible. D. All of the above are true. CDL Manual Section 2.2.4 Backing Safely When backing up the tractor trailer, try to avoid A. Backing toward the right, passenger side. B. Backing toward the left, driver's side. C. Pulling ahead to reposition your trailer. D. Having someone help or guide you.